welcome to data analysis video part three. This particular video is going to run through how to actually draw a maximum and minimum gradient on your linear graph once you've got it. It picks up where we left off from part two, where we were able to linearize our data. Um, and you can see those in column I, as well as propagate our uncertainties, which was in column J and K. I'm going to assume that you've watched a previous video on how to actually use Excel to plot a graph, but not only that, to include your uncertainties as error bars. If you have not done so, please go back to the data analysis module, uh, page nine on graphs to work out how to do that. If you have, then your graph will look like this here, which I've got on the right hand side. I have hand drawn in uh, by insert shapes, uh, some lines to help me work out where my maximum and minimum gradients will be. Just a quick recap on this. It is important that your maximum and minimum gradient passes through every error bar that's related to your data points. So if I pick up my maximum gradient line here, um, I can see that if I, I can actually make it steeper, uh, but if I do make it steeper, uh, like for example here, I would miss the very last data point. Um, so I have to bring it back and adjust it until I can just touch every data point. So just cast your eye to make sure that happens. And generally, if your data is like this one, um, you'll find that the actual um, lines themselves are, are guided by probably your first and your last uh, value in your particular data set. It is possible that because of your um, trials, uh, particularly if you have done many trials and some of your trials were more precise than others, uh, that you might have smaller error bars um, in the middle ranges, which might then make these data points in the middle your um, deciding factor. So I've adjusted these and we're going to use um, these particular values to help us. Now, in terms of what we're looking for, we're looking for um, the error bars that actually control where the lines end um, and meet. So for, for my lines, for the maximum gradient, the controlling uh, data point would be this one here on the left hand side of the very last set of data that I've got and on the right hand side of this one here. And over on uh, my minimum gradient, uh, which is the blue line that I've highlighted just now, uh, the minimum uh, data point would be here, which is to the left. So I'm looking for the most extreme left hand point um, on this particular um, smallest data reading that I've got and also the largest reading. So I'm just going to show you how to work these out and I've got my values here and I've actually already set up a column of values which are ready to accept uh, my maximum and minimum uh, gradients as well as the X and Y values. Let's put some values into our maximum and minimum gradients. To do that, I've zoomed out a little bit so that I can see all of my data values that I've used on this graph. I've got my uh, Y values, which is my mean displacement, as well as the absolute uncertainties of those, as well as my X values, which is time squared, and the measurement uncertainties for those as well. So I'm going to first of all create uh, the smallest value that I've got for my maximum gradient, which is this value down here associated with the first data point. So the first data point's X value is going to be um, inclusive of the error bars and the X axis. So I'll need the time value for the smallest uh, time that I've got, which is I4, uh, plus um, the absolute uncertainties that I've got for this particular um, uh, quantity, which is time squared. So I've got that here and I press enter. So that gives me my X values. Now for my Y values, um, for that particular same data point, so 1.4, um, the Y values have not changed. So I did not include the vertical error bars in those values. So that would just equal to 4.9. So that's the first data point for the orange line here. I now need to include the second data point for the orange line, which are my limiting points. And so up here, uh, my Y values also do not change since I did not include the Y axis error bars. And so the Y value for my largest value um, is just going to be 78.4, but my X values are going to be uh, much smaller than the original, uh, which the original being 16 uh, minus uh, my measurement uncertainty. So that's two. And so I've now got my values for these points. 
to check that they're actually correct, um, I've zoomed out so that you can see all the data values on the left hand side. But I'm just going to zoom back in because I'm going to show you what it looks like when it actually appears on the graph. So I've got my values. How do I put it on a graph? Um, click on the graph that you've chosen, go to design. And what you want to do is you want to go to select data. You literally want to tell Excel that you want to plot an additional set of data on here. And so I'm going to go to add and I'm going to call it originally uh, maximum gradient. It's important to use this particular term because when we look for it later on to do some editing, we'll be able to find the name. Uh, the X values are going to come from these values here, which I've just calculated. And the Y values are going to come from here, which I've just put in. If you now click OK and OK again, you should now see those points appearing on your graph. And I've picked the right points and you know they're at the right points because they meet the orange line. You will now need to repeat this for the minimum gradient value as well. I've now done exactly the same thing to calculate my minimum gradient values. I'm just going to re-show you how to add these onto the graph. So go to click on the graph, go to design, go to select data. And this time you want to add in your minimum gradient and you want to type that name in and you want to tell it the X value, which are these ones and the Y values. And this is one way we can visually check that you've done this correctly. Click OK, OK again. And now it shows up as gray dots. So these dots are now correct. And I can actually get rid of these uh, lines that I've actually physically drawn in, which is actually not um, trend lines. So I can get rid of these. And what I can do is I can now put in um, some trend lines that will have uh, an equation value associated with them. So one way to do that is to just click on the data points that you've got and you want to go to insert or add chart elements and you want to tell it to add in a trend line. But we don't just want it to add a trend line. We also want to actually have the option of adding everything else related to the trend line, which is like things like equations. So I want to click more options, go to linear over here on the right. And I want to Put an equation on the graph as well as set an R squared value so you can see that particular value. It fits beautifully. For the moment, I'll just leave both of those there. And I've got it set to linear, which is perfect. Um, and I've got it spanning across all of my data in terms of a domain range. If you wanted to adjust this ever so slightly, you can do so by using what we call a forward cast and a backward cast. So if you wanted to um, let's say bring it all the way backwards to indicate the y-intercept on the graph, you can actually get Excel to do this by casting it backwards. So a rough estimate is to uh, tell it how far to go back. So the backward casting is really about the distance that it needs to move in the x-axis. So I know the value is about 1.4. So to get all the way back to zero, I would need to get it to go back 1.4. Uh, times and it will actually then move the line so it now touches the y-axis which looks like this. Um, you can also extend it forward if you want to um, extrapolate ahead as well by using a forward casting method. But for now I'm just going to leave it backward casted to 1.4 because um, I probably want to show where it touches the um, axes uh, and if the intercept is important. Um, so I'm going to leave it as that and this is what you will need to do uh, also for the minimum gradient. But before we go off um, and start to do that, I'm just going to make this um, equation much larger. So I've just highlighted the box that has the equation in it. I'm going to make it much larger and I'm going to try to um, color code these so that it's easier for me to know that it is referring to the uh, maximum gradient. So I'm going to use um, an orange fill on this, just a really light um, orange color on the back so that I can get that to indicate that that relates to this. Uh, to also help, uh, the R squared value will actually have to be one uh, because there's only two data points so it fits perfectly. So there's really no point including an R squared value. I've really just put it there so I have an extra space I can delete um, that R squared value of one and I can put in the words max gradient. So it's super clear, even if someone um, cannot tell the different colors, they now know that within the box, this is the maximum gradient value. Before we move on, um, another thing that you should be adjusting is that you should have the symbols in the equation to match the symbols that you've used in the experiment. So I did not use Y and X, so I'll need to turn this to an S and with a subscript mean and also 
x wasn't x it was actually t squared i'm going to show you again how to change these to the right uh, subscripts so we want to go to font we want to go to superscript uh, for the two and then for the mean we want these to be a subscript uh, so we go back to the same place subscript so i showed you how to do this in video part one so if you want to see that again please go back to part one of the data analysis video now that we've completed the maximum gradient, we should have a go at the minimum. Um, if you click on the minimum gradient, it should pop up. But let's say that you had trouble clicking on a particular data set or you were just trying to click on your graph, but your error bars are so small that you are actually not clicking on the right things. What can you do? On the right hand side, there's a really helpful window that pops up. What you want to do is you want to go to the drop down menu and you should be able to find your series. So for me, I want to do everything to do with the minimum gradient. Since I named it properly, you'll be able to find the series minimum gradient. If you click on minimum gradient, it will take you and it'll actually highlight now on the graph, you can see it, um, those data points. So the next thing we want to do is we want to actually add a trend line. So now you can add the chart element, add a trend line, and it's only going to do it for those. And I'm going to use the more options instead of just clicking on a linear trend line. I'm going to set the equation and the y into uh, an R squared value on the chart. I am actually going to also backward cast this one as well. So this time I think I only need to move back about 0.6 or maybe a little bit less because now I've gone into the negative zone for um, the x value. So let's make it 0.5. Um, I'm nearly there. So this is fantastic. So I've got this sorted um, and I can move the actual trend line down here. Uh, adjust for the font size so to make it a bit more consistent with your other values uh, i'm going to color code this as well now this wasn't a gray color but i think i want this to be blue to match what i had before so i'm just going to click on the trend line and when you do that it shows up with a trend line option you can go to the color um, setting on the line setting um, and here you can switch the colors over so i'm going to switch this uh, to a fairly dark blue so you can see it and so that would be my minimum trend line. Your graph should now look like mine. I've adjusted the uh, equation to also use the symbols that are given in the experiment. And I've also labeled it minimum gradient and color coded it to match the blue line that I've got. The next thing is that it's confusing to have uh, blue dots uh, for my actual data points. So you can actually change the data points if you wanted to. Um, you can click on the data points. Notice that if you start clicking on the data points, you start to choose individual data points instead of the set. So I'm going to go back and actually choose series one, which is what I've got and all the data points are highlighted. And here, I actually probably want to go to the marker options and I want it to be um, a different shape. Perhaps you can choose a different shape if you want. Uh, you can go for uh, squares or round uh, dots uh, but I'm going to just change the color of them. So I'm going to turn them into black dots so they're easier to see. Uh, so I've got the fill and the border to adjust. And so I've done that now for both of them. So it's now black colored dots in the center. I'm now also going to fit a trend line to them because I actually haven't done the line of best fit yet. So if you go to uh, more options and now we know that it's a linear line. We want to go to the setting, it's linear. Uh, we want to show the equation uh, and this time also the R squared value on the graph. Um, and so I've got those both here and it's beautifully set out. This line is also blue, so I want to adjust this while I'm here. You can click on the line again and you can go to um, the settings and this time instead of having it dashed, I'm going to have a solid line and I'm going to change the color so that's black. Um, and so that indicates really the line of best fit. So I've got my line of best fit, my maximum and my minimum gradients. As well as that, I've got the gradient values and the intercept values on my lines, which will allow me to calculate the uncertainty of both the gradient and the y-intercept. If you want to know how to do that or the mathematics behind it, please go to page nine on the data analysis module on my classes and you'll find an uh, outline there uh, how to actually do the calculations. And so that's it. The only thing to fix now is make sure that these values, and this is one of the things that popped up again and again in student experiments, is that your symbols, making sure that they are actually uh, related to the symbols that you've chosen to use in the experiment. So you should be changing this final formula to match. I'm not going to show you how to do that. Uh, if you have any other questions, please do come to a help session. 